Hey folks, my name is Kason, although you might know me as Kalo, and today I'm going to be talking about the Crucible game mode Heart of the Hives. For context, I've been testing this game since 2017 and have been playing Heart of the Hives competitively since it released as a game mode back uh, in testing. I was the IGL and captain for the team that won the only Heart of the Hives tournament that was ever held during testing, and I feel it's safe to say that I've created a lot of the standards for how to play Heart of the Hives at a competitive level. That said, I firmly believe that we're nowhere close to playing the game at an optimal level, and so this video isn't meant to be just me telling you how to play, but rather giving you a foundation for which you can begin to experiment and figure out what you believe is the best way to approach the game. The focus here is going to be on strategy. If you're just picking up the game today or you just haven't really dived into Heart of the Hives yet, I highly recommend going over to Zussi Boy's channel and watching his Heart of the Hives guide. He covers a lot of the base mechanics that you're going to be encountering in-game. I'll link that video in the description down below. I decided to structure this lesson in seven different steps, those being character knowledge, composition, farming, grouping, information, team fighting, and opportunity windows. These are the seven core pillars of Heart of the Hive strategy, and today we're gonna to be focusing on the middle three. Those are farming, grouping, and information. I'm gonna be uploading an older video that I made during testing that goes into the more theoretical uh, about character knowledge and composition. Some of the info in there is a little outdated, but most of the theories will still apply to today. So if any of you are interested in that, that link will also be in the description down below. Finally, before I jump into it, I just want to point out that the info in this video is going to be focused on the early to mid game, which is why I'm doing it first. The stages of the game are arguably the most important, especially on the ranked ladder whenever that comes out. It's no secret that being ahead early and snowballing that to a win is a much easier path to victory than having to come back in the late game. So hopefully with the tools provided in this video, you'll be able to more consistently start your games off strong and finish them quickly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is farming. I don't mean to call out new players, but I see a lot of teams grouping up early as four and just running it down to the central harvester and looking for kills. Uh, while this will work against other new players who are doing a similar strat, you're losing out on a lot of value when you're grouping up so early on. And the reason for this is that mobs, uh, the PvE, like stompers, spitters, and lurkers are actually very valuable in the early game. Killing groups of these efficiently and getting harvesters that are near the mobs that you're killing is a much more stable way of leveling up. And leveling up is important for many reasons. You get new perks between levels 2 and 5, you get base health and base damage, and most importantly, you'll have base stat and perk advantages over your opponent if you're a level above them. So while getting one to two, even three kills in the early game is nice, it's not going to get you the experience you need to level up at a consistent pace. This is where farming routes come into play. PvE mob spawns are static at the beginning of the game. This means that the spitters, stompers, lurkers, and medkits even are all going to spawn in the same areas at the beginning of the game. Knowing which areas of the map have more dense populations of the mobs and knowing how to route your way to those mobs efficiently at the start of the match will give you a leg up on the opponent. A couple of valuable areas that come to mind are Spaceport, South Falls, and Crater. These aren't the only good areas though, and as I said before, it's more about being efficient with the time that you spend in the beginning of the match than it is just claiming this or that area. Which bleeds into my second point, which is awareness. For example, if both teams know that Spaceport is valuable, they'll likely both send somebody to Spaceport at the beginning of the match to farm. This not only puts both of those players in a high variant situation, it makes the early game a sort of territory war that I'll get into a little bit later. There are two ways to combat this variance. First is your team's efficiency, and that starts with your drop point. There are certain drop points on the map that are going to be better for more players on your team. Spots like right above Middle River or right above Central Harvester are pretty commonly picked spots for multiple reasons. Firstly, it puts your team next to a lot of areas on the map, meaning that everybody can go somewhere reliably and farm efficiently. The second reason is backup, which is my third point. Let's say you spawn at top central. You send someone to the central harvester, one to crater, one to spaceport, and one roams near canyons. If the other team sends someone to spaceport as well, say they spawn above middle river, then you're quickly able to send someone to back up your teammate so the fight isn't just a risky 1v1. 
without being too rambly on the topic, basically taking fair fights in the early game is an unnecessary risk. Let's move on to the second main category, grouping. So you've gone on your farming route and the first hive is going to spawn in a couple minutes. What do you do now? A common call you'll see in a competitive game is to start the group up at central. Central is powerful here because it's closest to all the other harvesters relative to the other ones. It's the easiest to rotate to and from, making it a good rendezvous point before you guys head to the major objectives. Speaking of which, that's the first point for this section. If it wasn't obvious already, capturing hives is how you win this game. But there are other major objectives that you need to consider along the way. An overwhelming majority of new players simply don't look at the amplifiers when they spawn. These are machines that give your team powerful permanent buffs when captured. Things like base health regen, extra damage, or even extra upgrades, they don't directly win you the game, but getting them makes the rest of the game a whole lot easier. Sometimes it's a better play to skip the hive entirely to capture two amplifiers. However, knowing when to make these kinds of calls is difficult, and it leads me to my former point about territory control. Having a majority of the harvesters captured for your team before moving into a major objective is very powerful. Not only does it put your opponents on a sort of clock because you're getting a lot more passive experience than them, it means that you have less you need to do after the major objective is finished. If you don't have to capture the map, you have more time to go to secondary objectives, get medkits for your team, etc, etc. But assuming your opponents know all this information as well, how do you reliably control the map moving into these major objectives? Well, it moves into my final category for today, which is information. At the higher levels of play, and I'd say even the highest levels of play, hypothetically, information is king in this game. In the same way that pros love vision wards in League of Legends, there are two major ways to get information in Heart of the Hives. The obvious one is the detect mode. If you don't already know, you press control, your character will crouch, and you'll be able to see opponents through walls up to 150 meters away. Much less if they're not moving, of course, but we'll get into the specifics of that in another video. The second way to reliably get information is through the harvesters. On your map, you're able to see when an opponent captures a harvester. You can also see the harvester do an animation where it kind of like pumps inwards and then outwards while they're capturing it, and you can see that while you're in detect mode, so keep that in mind too. Using these two bits of knowledge, you and your harvesters essentially become the vision wards that you see in other MOBAs. And this brings me back to why holding central is so powerful. Not only are you closest to all of the other harvesters if you're at central, but you're able to detect the most area that is central to the map while you're at central. If an opponent doesn't want to be seen by you, they're going to have to move to the outskirts of either side of the map to avoid detection. Something that simply isn't realistic when you need to be going to a major objective while also trying to get map control. I want to reiterate that these are meant to be guidelines, not set in stone rules. I don't think that simply splitting up as four and farming for the first five minutes of the game is optimal either. A common strat that I see in high level games is sending two mid and then the two others will split up and farm the opposite sides of the map. But I believe there are a lot of undiscovered ways to approach the game as well that we haven't seen yet. And the hope is that this guide will assist you in discovering that for yourself. In my next video, I'll talk about team fighting and opportunity windows, the other most important in-game pillars for Heart of the Hives. But until then, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. I'm also Kalo, K-A-L-O, hashtag 0001 on Discord. Feel free to DM me there with any questions or just hit me up on Twitter. That can be found down in the description as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the stuff I discussed today. Expect the other two parts of this series to go up sometime this next week. And I've also got a bunch of other content planned for Crucible. So if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay beautiful, and I'll see you later. Peace.